Okay, so in this series of videos, we're going to be going over the basics of the Go programming language. So this is the official website for Go, and it's going to be in the description below, so you can just navigate to that link in the description of this video. And according to the official website, Go is an open source programming language that makes it easy to build simple, reliable, and efficient software. So Go is cross-platform as well, so whether you're on Linux, Mac, or Windows, you can go ahead and navigate to this website and then click on this link over here and download the appropriate distribution for whatever operating system you have happen to be on. I also want to point out that another part of this website is there's a tour of Go. This link will also be in the description below as well. And this gives you a little bit more information on the language and also an interactive Go prompt over here so you can write Go inside of your browser. You can run it and it gets run and compiled on a server somewhere and you can see the output of what your program does here. So you can play around with Go even before you install it on your own machine. So something worthwhile to check out, go through this a little bit and see if you like the language. Another thing I want to point out, another resource, is this website called gobyexample.com. Again, the link will also be in the description below as well. And this is going to be kind of a syllabus, if you like, for the content that we're going to cover in this video series. So these are all sort of the concepts that we'll be covering in this video series. This very nice list of topics and a uh, small little synopsis of each of these was compiled by this particular user here. I want to give him credit, Mark McGranahan. So sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, but thank you for compiling a very nice website of very... Uh, you know, very well compiled website of all of these concepts in Go. So I encourage you to go to this website, check it out, and to consult this in addition to this series of videos to learn Go. So with that said, let's go ahead and navigate to a terminal and start writing our first Go program. So before we begin writing the program, I just want to mention if you are in a Linux box, you can very easily install Go via the command line by typing in sudo apt git install golang go. So that will go ahead and install it on your machine. I've already got it installed, so there's nothing here to be done. So if you're on Mac or Windows, again, just go to this website here, click on this link, and then download the distribution for either of these two operating systems. So I'm going to clear this out, and then I'm going to open up a text file. I'm going to be using Vim. You can use whatever text editor you like, Sublime Text or anything like that. And then I'm going to create a file which we'll call hello underscore world dash go. So all of the Go programs we'll be writing will have the extension of dot go. So I'm going to create that file there, and then we're going to go ahead and get to writing our program. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to type in package main, and then we're going to type in import open quote fmt close quote. So if you're coming from a Python background, I'm probably going to be discussing Go assuming that you're most likely coming from a Python background or are somewhat familiar with it, just because I assume that a lot of the people that watch these videos, of which the content is primarily Python-based, are most likely learning this from the standpoint of knowing Python. I'm going to kind of give a bit of a, I guess, a, a comparison between Go and Python, so it's easy to transition between the two. So if you are coming from Python, you, this import statement should look relatively familiar. This is how you import modules in Python. In Go, what you do is instead of just I guess in Python, you would just not have any quotes here, and you would assume that there's some module named FMT. In Go, we're going to surround the modules that we're importing with double quotes. It's important that double quotes are actually used. So for instance, another thing that I want to point out is if you're coming from Python, is if you define, let's say, a string variable like this, you can say this is a string. So S is the variable string with double quotes text. You can also say s is equal to test with single quotes as well. So the way that we're going to do it in Go, Go doesn't accept these single quotes when we're defining strings or importing modules. So we're just going to only use double quotes. So this is going to remove any ambiguity there. So again, what are we doing here? We're importing this module, which is called FMT. This is for formatting. This will allow us to do things like print output to the terminal. And this FMT library is provided by the Go language. So we're going to be making use of this library quite shortly. So what we're going to do next is we're going to create a function. And this is going to be the main function of the program. It's called main. So the name is main. We open uh, parenthesis, close parenthesis, and then open curly brace, close curly brace. So again, if you're coming from the background of Python, this requirement of a main function is probably somewhat of a foreign concept as well. If you're coming from a C, C++, or Java background, you're most likely familiar with a convention of something that looks like this, where you have int, main, and then open curly brace, closing curly brace, and this is where all of the main logic of your code will be run. So this is kind of the main loop of the code that you're writing, and then you might have some functions that are defined externally, but everything is run within this main function. The same convention 
is also true here. So everything is run within this, this main function here. So if you're coming from C, C++, Java, this notion is most likely quite familiar. If you're coming from Python, this might be a little bit different. So inside of this function that's called main, we're just going to do a very simple thing. We're just going to print out a line to the terminal in typical hello world fashion. We're going to say fmt.println and then hello world. Let's break down a little bit what's going on here. So fmt, that looks familiar because we imported that up above. So fmt again is an internal formatting library that's provided to us by Go. The way that we access functions as part of this library is we use the dot operator. Again, if you're coming from Python, using the dot operator to access functions from a class or from a module should be a familiar convention. And another convention that is at least respected in Go is that all of the functions that we use that are internal from Go will be start will start with a capital letter. So this print line function, this print ln function starts with a capital P. And it's a function, so it takes an argument. In this case, this print line function takes an argument, which is a string, and we're going to just feed in a string directly into these double quotes into this function. So that's pretty much all we'll need for this hello world program. So I'm in Vim, so the way I'm going to save the file, if you're not familiar, is just colon w for write. So now I've written the file, and I'm going to just go ahead and run this file within Vim, but if you want, you can also run this within a command, uh, within the same command window. So for instance, I could also open up another terminal here, make this a little bit bigger, and I could say go run, and then the name of the program that we just created, which is called hello world.go. So if I run this, I get the output, output hello world. So what I'm generally going to do in this video, just because it's a little bit easier and it keeps everything on one screen, is I'm just going to say colon, exclamation point, go, run and then hello world.go. The only difference here is I'm just running these things inside of Vim and I'm doing that by saying colon exclamation point. That exclamation point is letting me run terminal commands within, within Vim. If I hit enter, it'll take me temporarily to this terminal. I see the output, it's hello world. I hit enter and then I get back to the code that we were writing. So a few more things that I want to mention. If you want to do comments, you can do them two different ways. So if you're familiar with C, C++, Java, this is going to be exactly the same. You use two different slashes. This is a one line comment. And if you want something that's like a multi-line comment, again, this will be familiar convention, slash asterisk, and then line one, line two, and then so on and so forth. And then you end that with an asterisk and a slash. So that's a multi-line comment, this is a single line comment. So again, if you're coming from Python, you're probably familiar with the hashtag and with some form of quotes. So I'm just gonna remove these comments here. But that pretty much does it for this video. For all of the videos in this series, as all the videos on this channel, the code will be hosted on my GitHub page and you can just go ahead and download the code directly so you don't have to type it out and watch me uh, do that as I go in this video. You can just go ahead and download it and run it yourself. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below in this video. If there's any questions or comments or anything of the sort, please don't hesitate to leave them below. And thanks again for watching. Have a great day.